Today we're going to be raiding the Doctor Who Magic the Gathering cards. We'll start off with River Song. Apparently this is a red, blue, one generic, two, two, human Time Lord Rogue. As Time Lord, a creature type now. Meet in reverse, you draw cards from the bottom of your library rather than the top. That is, that is insanely bizarre. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I, this sounds like some sort of gimmick that my brother would like. And I believe there are many cards in the game that put cards directly on the bottom of your library so you could immediately draw them on top. And then spoilers, that's literally, apparently, the the mechanic here? Spoilers. Whenever an opponent scries, surveils, or searches their library, put a plus one plus one counter on River Song. Then River Song deals damage to that player equal to its power. That's insane. So every... Okay, well, okay, the... the there is one downside to this. People just stop searching their library and surveilling. They're just going to make sure that River Song is dead before they do any of that stuff. So it's actually not something you can actually force. Uh, full disclaimer, I've never seen Doctor Who. I barely know what it is. I watched a trailer to one of the seasons in preparation for this show, and it didn't really tell me a whole lot. But, um, yeah, here we go. I can still rate the cards, though. I wonder if the, is this going to be a are, are they have do they all have like super unique mechanics just like the Warhammer set like there's one mechanic to one card and that's it just for the flavor so I can't speak for flavor at all it's going to see played in CEDH then it's good enough for me that's good enough for me it passes King Ginger with the face of bow We got like 400 cards coming out of here. Actually, some of them are reprints. I forgot about that. Who is this? This is like Zordon from the Power Rangers. It's a big blue head. I mean, sorry, big head in a blob. It's in a blue jar of some sort. All right, we got Just Guy 1 Generic for a 04 Alien Advisor. I like how it has any toughness at all. This is a defenseless head in a jar from what I see. It's like something out of Futurama, like the President's. You can, t uh, you can tap, you may cast a spell with suspend from your hand. If you do, pay its suspend cost rather than its mana cost. Activate only as a sorcery. That is interesting. Do they have suspend cards in this set? You are not alone. All right, then. <laughs> Got it. Um, this sounds super narrow. Let's see, there are a lot of suspend cards with actual casting costs and then like a suspend cost. I really have no idea how you break this card. Like, what are you going to play? The best cards are like Crashing Footfalls, Ancestral Vision. Uh, maybe, the, is there a Time Walk card? I don't remember. Platonic Wicked, think what thinks this danger. Look, every card can't be a danger, you know? It's impossible. Ancestral, like, who cares? Like, even in EDH, you have access to, you have access to like, Treasure Cruise. It's not going to break the game. Honestly, I don't even think Ancestral Recall. I don't think Ancestral Recall is even that broken in competitive... I'm uh, sorry, in, in Commander overall. Probably in CDH it is. Reminds me of the last human at the end of the world. Ew. Okay, uh... I don't like it. I think it's gimmicky. Doesn't mean that it isn't fun, but, uh... I think it's a gimmick. Alright, let... It's the captain? Man, I, I wish I, I wish I knew a little bit about the show so I can like understand the lore and the flavor text and all that. Are there a lot of alien creature types? As far as I know, everything in the Ma Magic: The Gathering universe is technically an alien. Okay, let's look at Liquid Soulflies Cyber Conversion. Is that some? Is that like? Uh... Okay, hold on. It's a blue blue instant. Turn target creature face down. It's a 2-2 Cyberman artifact creature. It's like you've gone into Tron or something. Do not fear. We will take your fear from you. You will be like us. So what is it? Tron meets the Borg from Star Trek? I'm getting my geek on in this, uh, in this, in this show today. Hot take. If every card is at danger, it's the same as if nothing is at danger because they all cancel each other out. That's right. If the power level is the same, nothing's not... If everything's supremely broken, then nothing's broken. Is this... This is fine. This is a fine card. It's a weird... Uh, but if it turns face down, people can just turn it face up, right? It's not like it lost all the abilities. So I don't like it. It's like they, they tried to make some blue removal... 
but they can just recast the card, right? I, I guess it's something similar to... What is that blue instant? It's a blue one generic. You destroy a creature, and then you, like, uh, put something from the top of your deck into a 2-2 creature. But the thing is, that's a random card. In this case, you know what that card is. That thing is busted. That's why you try to turn it face down. I mean, unless there's some weird way to defend against some other removal with this thing. Not Pongify, uh, Reality Shift, that's right. It's similar to Reality Shift, except it's not a random card. You know this card is good. Not, well, I'm sure blue decks will play this, but it's not as reliable as Reality Shift or Pongify or any of those other actual blue remo uh, uh, removal spells. Some one, two, four, C, Barbara Wright. Barbara. Wright with a W. Okay, we got a one, uh, white one generic 1-3 one, human advisor. History teacher. Sagas you control have read ahead. Oh, God! That could be really strong. So that uh, you can, like, move to, like, the second or third chapter. What is that? A saga enters the battlefield. Choose a chapter and start with that many lord counters. It's like uh, reading from chapter three. You start, you start the book from the middle. Okay, Doctor's Companion. You can have two commanders if the if the other is the Doctor. This card is insane. Uh, I think isn't that just Partner? Did they just rename Partner? Do we really ha need to have two names for the same mechanic? You can have two commanders if the other is a Doctor. Okay, it's Companion for sorry, it's Partner for Doctors. And what makes it a Doctor in the name and the in the creature type? I don't know. Looks like a reincarnation of Yatexa. Yes, it can. If they all if they already have read ahead, do they have double read ahead? <laughs> I guess you just read as far as you want. So uh, that will make a lot of sagas like way more playable. With like the downside to a lot of sagas is that you gotta like wait one, two, sometimes three turns for the ability that you that you want. I think actually this card is strong, and effectively you're gonna get like another uh, you get like another commander anyway, as far as I'm concerned. So it does look carry like Carrie Fisher. It's Princess Leia. Where was the other princess from Spaceballs? I don't remember. Okay, it limits the companions to the set. I I think is the point. You mean you mean the partners? That's what. Did they really have to say companion? I guess it's like flavorful to the show or something. But we have a mechanic called companion, so this is sort of screwing with my brain. Oh yeah, Princess Vespa. This is what Princess Vespa did. After she retired from being a princess. Okay, let's look at the war doctor. The war doctor. Going to war, I see. Okay, we got a white, red, two generic time lord doctor. When one of your other permanents phase out or whenever one or more other cards are put into exile from anywhere, put a time counter on the war doctor. You know, I feel like they're trying to make the set somehow have synergy with every other mechanic in Magic the Gathering's history. Why Why did we bring back phasing? Okay, when the War Doctor attacks, it deals damage equal to the number of time counters on it to any target. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. So when one or more other perms phase out, when one or more other cards are put into exile from anywhere. So we phase things out, we put things into exile, it gets bigger, it attacks, it kills other things, it keeps getting bigger. It's just, uh, it's exponential as far as I'm concerned. This is worse than compound interest. But at the same time, well, I'm gonna hate this thing in one-on-one -on -one commander. Because if, like, you can't, if you don't deal with this, then it just kills off every last little thing that you actually play. Yeah, any target could target you! If it doesn't even target. I guess this card is great. I like the look of it. I'll tell you this. I am afraid of this card. I'm afraid of playing against it. I don't want to have anything to do with this damn thing. If it was just phasing, I wouldn't care. Emerald Crowley with uh, my favorite is Don't Blink. Uh, taking MTG slang and using it to inform mechanics. Chef's Kiss. What, do we break the, the fourth wall here? Don't Blink. A blue one generic instant. Until end of turn, if one or more creatures would enter the battlefield from exile... Or after being cast from exile, uh, well, their owners shuffle them into their libraries instead. This is something we need for the evoke cre- oh no, it wouldn't work for the evoke creatures. Not all of them go to exile. It's only, only, uh, has synergy with, uh, ephemerate. Well, anyway, yes, this is quite the joke that they have on this card. Plus, it cycles. 
So if any, if a creature would enter the battlefield from exile, because basically if you blink anything, it goes to exile. And it come, when it comes back to the battlefield, you're going to shuffle it into the library. Or it should just stay there. It should just never come back. Does and require both conditions to have a time counter? Oh, hold on. Whenever one or more other permits are put into exile from anywhere, when one or more other permits are phased out, and when whenever one or more... It's weird that they put the and there, but I don't... Even the way it's phrased here, or and whenever one or more... Uh, I think it... No, it's... The and can be looked at like or here. I guess they had or too many times. And it looked... It just word, it looked worded very even more weird, weird if they use uh, or. Anyway, don't blink. Um, really niche card. It's a, more of a Gotham card, but you know what? It's a unique card. I like it. We need more unique cards like this in Magic. Fill up some space that never filled up before. Little uh, MX Doom. Can't turn it face up until it actually has morph. Um, oh, is that true? Cyber conversion? Turn target creature face down. It's a 2-2 Cyberman artifact creature. Is that how the rule works? No, no, no. That can't be. Because there are tons of creatures that you can turn face up. Like, uh, if we look up, what's it called? Um, reality shift. Exile target creature face down. Its controller manifests the top card of its library. That player puts the top card of their library onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. If it's a creature card, it can be turned up any time for its mana cost. So, um... Oh, you're saying it... Oh, so it literally... So unless it's manifested, this thing is actually just a 2-2? It is stuck? Alright, I'm gonna trust you guys. I'm not a judge! I'm just trying to interpret the game based on other cards that do similar things like this. They should give me some, like, little extra rule text here. Okay, so the deal is, if you blink it, which I guess this is a blink set of some sort. They already have anti-blinking cards. So Cyber Conversion actually is going to be, uh, it, it's going to be a slam dunk removal spell, a staple from here on out. Get your Cyber Conversions. Uh, okay, uh, reality shift, you're not part of, you're not part of this thing. Okay, let's look up, uh, Gormick! Yeah, what do you got for us, Gormick? Gallifrey stands is crazy. Gallifrey? Gallifrey? Okay, we found it. By we, I mean me. Okay, blue, white, four generic, legendary enchantment. When Gallifrey stands enters the battlefield, return all doctor cards from your graveyard to your hand. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a doctor creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Then if you control 13 or more doctors, you win the game. I don't know if how to break this card, though. That sounds really slow. So it's like show and tell one every turn for... Just doctors. And how many how many doctors are in this set? How many doctors can you jam into your deck? How many doctors have we even seen today so far? Not that many. Yeah, we found it. Uh, so anyway, the... I think this card's fine. I mean, it's card advantage late in the game. But I have... You know, the way I play play commander the game is usually pretty clunky i don't know if i, I have time to play gallifrey stance put all the doctors back in my, in my hand and then spew them all back onto the battlefield change thing oh my god oh my god it's broken is doctor a creature type i see time lords no it is a doctor doctor is a creature type holy crap the morophon players are drooling they're salivating Morphon is a five. Morphon's a five-color commander, I believe, right? Thirteen doctors, not that many. But you know, uh, changelings. There's millions of them. So basically, the game is this. But you, you still need thirteen changelings on the battlefield. Like, if they have thirteen, then congratulations, you won the game. I have no problem with that. There's probably be, but there's probably some jank way of getting the ball on the battlefield, like mill your library and then return all creatures, convert mana cost two or less to your battlefield or something like that. Um, anyway, I don't know. It, it, we'll, we'll just say this could be jank, but it also could take games to the bank. Only time will tell. All right, next super chat. We've got Little Mr. Doom. We have to talk about everybody, uh, everybody lives or 
everybody lives. Everybody, I think this is everybody lives. Everyone lives. We have a white one generic instant. All creatures gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Players gain hexproof until end of turn. Players can't lose life this turn and players can't lose the game or win the game this turn. That is insane. Okay, that, I'm not going to say it's broken, but it's definitely playable. I mean, this is like the ultimate counter spell of all counter spells. This is, this could see a lot of play outside of even Commander. All creatures gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. It does everything except draw a card. You know, all it's, it's just missing, uh, it's just missing draw a card at the end of it. And then it would probably see play in every deck that plays white possible. Everybody lives, Rose. Just this once, everybody lives. The ninth Doctor. And <laughs> Mirror Weave, we're all doctors. Everyone's a doctor now. Uh, doesn't stop commander damage from being counted, even if you can't lose. Same with Infect. And you die to commander damage, Infect as a state-based action at the beginning of the next turn. Well, that is going to be very sad if you die to, uh, commander damage. Who the hell dies to commander damage? I usually die to regular damage before the commander damage. Oh my god, you could put it under Isochron Scepter. Two mana instant. All of a sudden, that's a play. I, the Isochron Scepter, everybody lives perpetually. Well, that, now what? Oh, then it becomes a game of only commander damage. Nothing else. Oh, that's that's insane. Anyway, great card. It's just bonker. I'm curious what, like, this is a real, like, what can't this thing do? So you gain, your creatures are hexproof. They're indestructible. You target me, I have hexproof. You try to fast as Oracle for the win. I play everybody lives, you don't win, you have no library, you lose. It's like the answer everyone was asking for for Thoracle. Finally, Thoracle could die to everybody lives. They need an extra counter spell for this damn thing. They'll be comboing off and be like, can I do this? Can I do this? The, the, at first they're getting excited, I'm comboing off. And then everything's resolving while everyone has mana up. Oh my god, they're letting me combo off. This is going to be a problem. Anyway. It, it can still well of course it can be countered but whatever you gotta have a counter spell Give, they're giving white more resources here okay do we have another card um the text box looks weird like the justification of the text the text box looks like it was like a custom card to be honest where everything's like sh i don't know the font is weird look there's so much space over here honestly it looks custom made Gas this card every turn somehow, and the game goes endlessly. Okay, some said there are some of you, like someone to foresee that, uh, suggesting cards. Okay, we got Ian Chesterton. It's a white two generic two three human scientist, science teacher. Each saga spell you cast has replicate. What the hell? Replicate cost is equal to its mana cost. Oh God, I don't. I think that's going to be very clunky. There's not many sagas that are like very cheap. Um. Doctor's Companion. You can have two commanders if the other is a doctor. Not a huge fan of this card. I think it's cl it's a free roll. Like you, you can you can pair it with another doctor, so it's got that going for it. But I think the ability is not nearly as broken as the other ones. It's it's the, 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 the dirtling command. You like the dirtle? Do you like chapters? You like stories? Telling stories in your commander night? Well, you're gonna want Ian Chesterton. Experiment with him because he's experimenting himself. Okay, next super chat, we've got Pacers Fan Forever, the sixth doctor. Do they have old doctors in here? Oh my god, it's Simic! Uh, and it also looks like... Uh, what is the chocolate factory guy? Charlie. Charlie and the chocolate factory. Looks like Charlie. Okay, we've got a blue, green, four generic, three, three... Time Lord Doctor, Time Lord's prerogative. Whenever you cast a historic spell, copy it! Uh, except the copy isn't legendary. This ability triggers only once each turn. So whenever you cast a historic, I can't remember what a historic spell is, like artifact, or is it anything legendary? Artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. A copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. I hate the historic type. It makes no damn sense to me. Oh, sorry, not, uh, Willy Wonka? Charlie was <laughs> Charlie and the chocolate. Oh, I'm thinking of the book name. You're like, yeah, Willy Wonka. Yeah, that's not Charlie. Goes to show. I don't. I read this book when I was like in grade two or something like that. Or it, it was sorry, I didn't read it. Like the teacher read it to us, so I don't remember. 
Willy Wonka! I also haven't seen the movie yet. I probably should. Uh, cast a historic spell, you get a legendary, and it can... That's pretty... Okay, it could be pretty strong. So if you have two or more legendary that doesn't count as legendary permanence, I think that's actually pretty good. And you get... You know what? You're usually just playing one card per turn. Why not double it? Why not double it with the sixth doctor? And it's Simic. They're broken anyway. They're always broken. This is a situation that requires tact and finesse. Fortunately, I am blessed with both. Grade 2, like second grade? That's right. We call... In Canada, we call it grade 2. You could also call it the second grade. That's fine as well. Uh, you guys still trying to break that enchantment way back there? I don't know. There's some sort of lore going on in the chat that I'm not following here. Oh my god, he does look like Willy Wonka. Exactly. I know my Willy Wonka. I just don't know. I'm just bad with names. That's all. It's really bad for Magic the Gathering. Don't give me meddling, mage. I won't know how to play it properly. Okay, Krokor Games. The Master Multiplied. Rakdos. Red, black, four generic. Time Lord Rogue, 4-3, Myriad, Myriad, I don't know what a Myriad is. The legend rule doesn't apply to creature tokens you control. Who cares? They're tokens. Triggered abilities you control can't cause you to sacrifice or exile creature tokens you control. This sounds like some sort of awkwardly specific card for a very specific deck. Like, it doesn't even sound like it's a card to make a deck around. It's like a card to help defeat some other person's deck that is, like, beating you down. It's like you hate sack- you know, there's somebody out there, they make you sack and exile all your stuff, all your tokens, you hate them, so now you're gonna play the Master Multiplied and, uh, tell them to shove it. My red is a keyword? I have no idea what it is. My red makes a token attacking each other opponent. This still doesn't help me. Just read my red- it, it's- there's nothing here. Yeah, I got, I got, okay, I'm gonna look up my, my Riyadh keyword MTG. It's a triggered keyword ability introduced in Commander 2015. By way of token copies, it enables a creature to be used to attack multiple players at once. What? Okay, so on, like, if I, if I can use one creature attack three people, is that what it means? So that means the master multiplied can attack or, or the tokens can attack simultaneously three people at once. It's a very bizarre card. Is it me or is this a look? This art looks like it was generated by AI. Who knows? The way Wizards is trying to, you know, keep costs down, I don't blame them. I also don't blame you for thinking that. You swing with master, you get two tokens. All right, thank you very much. So you, oh, you attack with this thing and you get two tokens. You know, this is a keyword. I really wish they gave me some explanation. Whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than the defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of this creature that's tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control. If one or more tokens are created this way, exile the tokens at end of combat. Well, okay, so this was way clearer than MTG Wiki. MTG Wiki was not clear. All right, that's good. Good. Um... So that gets out of control really quickly. Okay, that's a good one. It's a good card, in my opinion. Okay, Pacers fan forever. Whoops. Return the past. Oh, we got a red, red, four generic enchantment. As long as it's your turn, each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. Its flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. That is broken. That is an incredible card. That could see play in a lot of different decks. It's Yogmoth's Will, effectively. Isn't this just Yogmoth's Will? It's just Mono Red Yogmoth Will. Yeah, you're you're back. You're in my head. All my memories are back. I swear. As long as it's your each instance. Oh, but it's only for instance and sorceries. So it's like Past in Flames the Enchantment, effectively. Okay, so it's Past in Flames, but it's it's permanent! You just play this thing there once, and it's there for forever. Hi, hey, CMC. Hey, do you know what? For the red decks, they don't care. They got them. They got rituals, all right? They got, they got mana to spend. They like to flaunt their mana around, those red decks. Yeah, so forever. Excellent card. Instant staple, in my opinion. Okay, loading with 
Decaying Time Loop is going in my Urubrask deck for sure. We have a red three generic, instant, discard, discard all cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. And it's got retrace. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. This card, I think, is still quite fair, but it's quite good in the right deck. It's a bit expensive for what it's doing. It's card disadvantage, but if you need to get cards in the graveyard, if that's your thing, also, this card looks great in Dredge. Although, again, it's like form, they have better ways of like drawing cards and discarding their hand for cheaper. Uh, but if that's what you're trying to do, it's got the synergy for it, that's for sure. For six men, it's sort of fair. It has to make an impact, and it will. It absolutely will. I don't even think six men it's fair. In commander, like you have mana up, you have too much mana. If there's one format that has more mana than anywhere else, it's gonna be commander. You have solar ring for crying out loud. Uh. Okay, we go with King Ginger. What do you got for us? The 12th Doctor is the Master of Shred. Twelfth. Apparently, I don't know how to spell twelfth. I am today's years old that I can't spell twelfth. Um, okay, red, blue, three generic for a 4-4. Four, four. Guitar hero wannabe. Okay, we have a Time Lord Doctor. The first spell you cast from anywhere other than your hand each turn has demonstrate. The keywords, people! When you cast that spell, you may copy it. If you do choose an opponent to also copy it, a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. So, oh, it's like, it's almost like a group hug deck. You share as easy it around. Everyone gets to share. Everyone gets a something from the 12th Doctor. Or I don't know about everybody, you get to choose. You and somebody else, you're gonna help your buddy out. Probably in a cover band. People in the background would be huge close up. <laughs> that was, oh, it was a keyword already? Okay, whenever you copy a spell, put a plus one plus one counter on the 12th Doctor. I don't, th this card is just a little like, it's just a funsy card. I don't think the card's actually good. It's like, but if you, it's, it's, it's in the fun territory. I need like another. Okay, we're gonna have this for this sound effect for you know, it's not good. It's not bad But it's not competitive or anything. It's but it's it's gonna do its thing and you're gonna enjoy yourself with the 12th doctor 12th doctor plus slaughter pact. Oh god But you only but you only copy it for one person you could also die you have to make sure you actually you don't, So you don't want slaughter pact you want pact of the titan or something yeah, so you force your opponents to play a pact. The first spell you cast from anywhere. Okay, you cast that spell, you may copy if you do choose an opponent. You can only choose one opponent at a time. I think it's clunky. If it chose all opponents, you would kill them all with the pact, but it doesn't choose all opponents, so you can only choose one person. And that's it. That's it. So actually, they've balanced it out. You want to play Slaughter Pact? You die too! Um. Okay, uh, we're gonna look at way more Doctor Who cards. We heard that music. That means it's time to thank our sponsor today, FusionGamingOnline.com. You know where to get them Doctor Who cards. You can get them from Fusion Gaming Online. Get them Commander decks to, or buy the singles. Personally, I'm a singles person. You, uh, th th there's a whole bunch of cards in those Commander decks, but maybe you only need one. So you just go buy all your singles from FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget, however, when you're buying your Doctor Who cards, you get an extra 5% off when you use that special sweet coupon code Nikachu at checkout. Also can be used to buy any other cards. And we can also thank our uh, we can also thank our other sponsor today, Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. Before you buy them Doctor Who cards, you want to play test them on Magic the Gathering Online to see if they work the way you want them to, and if they do, then you commit to buying them. And I can try out infinite new cards that ever get printed uh, in Commander products and new sets when I'm renting with Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore XQJ. And weirdly, I do play... I was playing a little bit of... I'm playing a little bit of everything right now on Magic the Gathering Online. Uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one Commander, some... Uh, four player commander You can still play slaughter pact if you play him with Clara Oswald 
You're taking risks, people. And also, the, the moment you play your first slaughter pack here, everyone's gonna gang up on you. They'll be like, They've got slaughter packed! We can't pay for that damn thing! They're gonna come after you. They're gonna come get you. you be careful with the 12th Doctor. Okay, hold on. I saw some really weird... Christopher B says, Dinosaurs on a spaceship. Oops. Is this true? It's a Triceratops. We have a white, red, four generic, seven, seven dinosaur. Wow, this this show has everything. It's like Ixalan the show. You've got you uh you got humans, you got dinosaurs, you don't have merfolk, but you got aliens. They sort of look the same. It's basically Ixalan the show. Uh, okay, it's a 7-7 seven, seven dinosaur with vigilance and trample. Other dinosaurs you control get plus one plus one and have vigilance and trample. Suspend of five mana. What's the difference? You literally. Okay, whenever a time counter is removed from a uh, dinosaur on a spaceship while it's exiled, you cut a 2 2 red and white dinosaur creature token which flying in trouble. That's interesting. But why are they on a spaceship? Did they make the spaceship? Or is this like some sort of like cargo bay thing that they're transporting the dinosaurs just like in Jurassic Park 2? They brought the T Rex to San Francisco and it was a disaster. Absolute disaster. Hold on. I have a dinosaur sound effect. Where's my dinosaur sound effect? Yeah, I've heard of snakes on a plane. And now it's time for the sequel, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. Hey, why not let dinosaurs go to space? Shouldn't they be more floaty too? Imagine the dinosaurs like in the cargo area just floating around. Where'd that gravity come from? They're so heavy they still have gravity. Okay, Little Mr. Doom. The Ninth Doctor is the one I want to build around. Uh, okay, we got the Ninth Doctor. Red, blue, one generic, two, four, Time Lord Doctor. Haste into the TARDIS. Whenever the Ninth Doctor becomes untapped during your untapped step, you get an additional upkeep step after this step. I like this card. You know, if you can, br you can break this card with extra cards that trigger at upkeep. Oh no, hold on, this is an untapped step. Hold on, whenever the Ninth Doctor becomes untapped during your untapped, you get an additional up. No, yeah, okay, sorry. I thought, at first I thought it said you get an additional untapped step, which is useless. An additional upkeep, you get double the upkeep triggers. You can build around this card. I think it's good stuff, and it's pretty cheap. Pretty, three mana, not hard at all. Ian McCall, oh, wait, when we get to Jurassic Park, we'll do that episode one day. But today, it's the Doctors. The Doctors. Yeah, I don't remember this being in Jurassic Park. When was there a spaceship? Um, all right, Alpha Nerd, banished to another universe. We got White Four Generic Enchantment, Affinity for Historic Permanence. It's a very convoluted keyword so it costs one less for each historic permanent i have so artifacts legendaries that's right we just we just need to make affinity easier that's all that's what that mechanic needed i didn't know when banished to another universe enters the battlefield exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until banished to another universe leaves the battlefield it's like a more fair ley line binding which was broken okay this is a good card i think i think it's a fair card I think in the right deck, this is just going to be a staple, so it's good stuff. Uh, time counters on a vanishing or an unsuspended cards are removed on upkeep, huh? Yeah, I understand. Oh, so you want to? Well, you want to combo the uh, the ninth Doctor with the dinosaurs on the ship? Is that what you're trying to tell? You want two 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 red and white dinosaur creature tokens per turn? Okay, hold on. Toad says it's all aliens and giants living in the center of the Earth. The governments of the world are covering it up. Of course they would. When they get angry, they blast out a bunch of molten volcano. Molten lava. Uh, Alpha Nerd! What do you got for us, Alpha Nerd? De uh, oh no, we did that one already. Uh, Alpha Nerd again! Crisis of Conscience. It's a white, white, four generic sorcery. Choose one! And choose carefully. Destroy all tokens or destroy all non-land, non-token permanents. Okay, so this is for and against 
the token players. The token players want it because they want to blow up everything that's not their own stuff. The non-token players want it because they want to blow up the tokens. All right, so we got a very interesting piece of removal. It is a little clunky and jank at six mana. Like at six mana, we got wraths that can do anything and everything. But this is a one-sided board wipe, not bad for whoever's playing it. This is the only doc you know? I don't know any doctors. None here. Affinity, who are you? Affinity for Historic. I'm <laughs> I'm you, but better. Exactly. What are they, why do they have to buff up Affinity? One of the most... I wouldn't say it's the most broken mechanic out there, but it's up there. It's problematic. Uh, Alright, let's move to... I have a lot of super chats. Little Mr. Doom, I can tell some of you enjoy this show more than others. Already built a deck around Duggan, Private Detective. Duggan. <laughs> he's got methods. Look, he's going to throw a chair at you. Uh, he has methods of making you talk. It's a blue, green, two generic, star, star, human detective. Duggan's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. It's been a long time. Or do they do that now? Maybe that's a standard thing. A long time ago, they, instead of writing out the whole name of a creature, they would just, like, short form it. So that just, it, it just brings me back to beta in some way. Duggan's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature, number of cards in your hand. Uh, oh, wow, with Reliquary Tower, that could be insane. And it's also a Simic, so of course you're drawing cards. Whenever Duggan enters the battlefield or attacks, you investigate, which is good. I like investigating clue tokens, and the, the these these cards you just assume what they do. How does a new player that reads investigate? I guess these days if you want to play Magic: The Gathering, you need Google. If you don't have Google, you screwed. None of the cards make sense. The most important punch in history, really. Okay, uh, green one generic tap. Duggan deals damage equal to twice its power to another target creature. Activate only once. Whatever. So what if it dies? Can I do it again? Does history reset itself? Or does the game remember this punch for, like, for, for the ever? We did River Song already. River Song is great. I guess reading the card doesn't always explain the card. No, not anymore. Not with these keywords. They've keyworded everything. They've keyworded things to the point where... Because if they can keyword, they can squeeze in more words on it. More abilities. Benjamin K is like, can I blink it? Can we blink the thing? So does blinking and coming back from the command zone count? Or, like, does not coming back from the command zone count? It'll be a new object after moving zones. And it becomes even a more important punch in history. Only the history books will say that he punched. He actually threw this damn chair. Which is, uh, infinitely more damaging and more painful. Okay, do we have any other, uh, is this a card? Exterminate? I'm sorry, like, it's, I'm really sorry, like, you, some of you are probably, like, mentioning cards. Okay, if you have, just for today, if you have a card, put in quotation marks or something. Because you guys are just saying, like, random words to me, and I can't tell if you're just saying a random thing in chat or if it's actually a card. Say, like, exterminate, what, exterminate the card, or is that a card that you want me to look up? Black, two generic sorcery, replicate, tap and untap, Dalek you control. What the hell is a Dalek? Whenever you cast a spell, copy it for each time you paid its replicate cost. You may choose new targets for its uh, for the copies. And then destroy target creature. It loses three life. Tap and untap, Dalek. So hold on, I can copy it for each Dalek I have? Sounds niche. Destro but it destroys a creature. It destroys anything. Creature type, yes. They're the big robot. There's robots in this show too. This robot. This show goes everywhere. We got we got aliens. We got dinosaurs. We got cybernetic robots that act like the Borg. You're gonna get Tron. This reminds me of Incinerate the card. What that? This thing looks familiar. Like from like a 30s space movie or something. It's like R2D2 version negative one. Dalek is a creature token in this set. Ah, interesting. Um, 
Honestly, from a black player's perspective, I have no idea if you need this card or not. Because it's literally destroy a creature. And that for a lot of black cards, it's hard to do that. They all have some sort of catch. Like, it's got to be CMC 3 or less. Or you gotta you have to remove something from the battlefield. There's only non-black creatures or non-artifact creatures. So maybe this card is good. Not going to hate on this card. So maybe this is a good thing. They're actually little squid things in a trash can robot suit. Oh, weird. It could be really good. Maybe three mana just bl destroy creatures. That's just good stuff these days. Oh, the changelings count. The value, the price of the changelings are going up after this set. They're going up. Okay, see, it's already working. The master, we looked up the master multiplied. Thanks for asking, though. Okay, I'm going to look at a paid. Hold on. Uh, did we do... Okay, we just did Doug and Private Detective. Now we have Alpha Nerds, Ian Chesterton. I thought it, I thought the name was literally broken. We did this one already. Okay, we're gonna donate that one. I swear you. Do you guys snipe yourself? Okay, let's look at Clara Oswald. We got six mana. There's no color. Six generic. What is this? An Eldrazi? It's a two-three human advisor. Impossible girl. If Clara Oswald is in your command, is your commander, choose a color before the game begins. Clara Oswald is the chosen color. I'll just throw this in my mono red deck or my mono blue deck. If a triggered ability of a doctor you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Doctor's companion. You can have. Oh, you can. So you can. I don't get this. Why is that necessary? Just to randomly give you like commander color identity or of some sort? It looks okay. So anyway, just on stats alone, it's crap. But if this has some real tactical purpose for letting you play several colors in your deck, we'll just say it's like it's a doctor's companion. So it's just a free partner. It's a, it's a bonus. It's a free roll here. And randomly, you can play a 2-6 creature for 6 mana, which I never, which has never in the history of Magic the Gathering been a good rate. Unless you're attacking with butt. Let's you add any color to your commander deck. Yeah, so for that reason, and because it's a free roll, because it's a doctor's companion, you don't have to be committed to just this commander. Just companion it with another doctor, you're good to go. So wait, if you choose a different color, it makes your deck illegal? Well, don't make it. Ideally, you're going to name the color that's of your deck, so that you make it legal. This is the card that makes everything legal, not illegal. Just make sure, yeah, if you name the wrong color, you're screwed. Uh, okay, next super chat, we've got... I gotta, hold on. Okay, we're gonna go with the 10th Doctor next. Or is it the... Is it, oh, and is it, uh, I think we did the ninth doctor. We did, uh, little Mr. Doom. We gotta do the tenth doctor now. I think there's 13 doctors. Even though I'm not very well versed on these weirdo cards. Okay, we got, or sorry, the, uh, the show. Red, blue, three generic, three, five, time lord doctor. Uh, Al, Alan's Y. Whenever you attack, exile cards on the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Put three time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. So you attack, exile three cards until... Exile, oh, sorry. Exile cards until you exile a non-land card and it has gained uh, suspend. So you, this is like really delayed card draw. Timey wimey. Pay seven. Time travel three times. Activate only as a sorcery. For each suspended card you own and each permanent you control with a time counter on it, you may add or remove a time counter, then do it two more times. I can only see this being, like, particularly useful. Oh, no, 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 this is good. Okay, so you, like, suspend something with three time counters on it, you just speed it up by two turns. Not bad. It's okay. I think this is gonna, this is more of, like, the janky type of card. If you have infinite mana, maybe this is good, but if you have infinite mana, you can win some other way. Not necessarily, yeah. Whenever you, uh, no, sorry. Whenever you attack, exile the top cards. You do have to attack. As far as I see, you have to attack. You don't have to attack for timey wimey though. The parting aways from game over time. We have not looked at it. Okay, red, red, four generic. 
It's a saga, which you can double with some of the cards in this set. Exile the top five cards of your library. For each non-land card exiled this way, put a number of time counters on that card equal to its mana value if it doesn't have suspend to game suspend. I had... Oh wow, this is a huge suspend set. Where's Teferi? Huh, Teferi? Thought you could go forward and back through, through backwards through time. You should have made a little bit of a cameo in this sh in this in this set, even though there's no flavor at all. Perhaps Teferi brought the dinosaurs from this show to Ixalan. Okay, pay two. Time travel, then time travel again. Is that what go forward? Time travel three times for each suspend card you own and each permanent control the time counter. You may add or remove a time counter. Oh. Interesting. So you can add suspend card, suspend counters, or remove them. But why would you want to add? I guess for some of the cards where you get an ability when one is removed. Yeah. Okay. Time. Uh, okay. So chapter three for each opponent, destroy up to one target artifact that player controls. Honestly, that is a very underwhelming chapter three. All that for blowing up an artifact. It's probably more of a flavor win than an actual win. I think. I don't like it. Too, too too janky. Too clunky. We need to see Blink. Didn't we do that? Oh, we didn't do Blink. Okay, Blink. Black, blue, too generic. Chapter 1 and 3. <laughs> we just move it. So we go forward in time, back through time, then forward in time. Sorry, no. We're at, we're at our normal time schedule. Then we move forward in time, then we go back, and then we go way forward. So chapters one and three, choose target creature, its owner shuffles it into their library, then investigates. And then chapter two and four, create a two, two black alien angel artifact creature token with first strike vigilance. And whenever an opponent casts a creature spell, this permanent isn't a creature until end of turn. What the hell does that mean? Very bizarre. TARDIS is the main part of the show. I don't even know what TARDIS is. TARDIS! Is that a phone booth? It's a two it's a floating phone booth that goes through time. Alright, two mana for a two-four vehicle flying. When TARDIS attacks, if you control a time lord, the next spell you cast this turn has cascade and you may plane you may planeswalk. What the hell does that mean? What does it mean you can planeswalk? Oh, hold on, is this for um uh those stu those planes cards? Uh, like from Arch Enemy or whatever? I have no idea. Okay, Crew 2. Tap any number of creatures you control with power 2. Yeah, okay, we, we all know what Crew 2 means. At least I hope I know what Crew 2 means. You can become... Yes, even I can become a Planeswalker, Billy. I'm a Planeswalk. It looks, looks exactly like an AI-generated card. You know, your next spell you cast has Cascade. And you can Planeswalk. You're a Planeswalker now. Oh, so it's... Uh, okay, it is a phone case. So it is a phone booth. Careful what phone booth you get into. RMS Titanic? What? Plane Chase? Oh yeah, from Plane Chase? I have no I I don't understand the planes walk thing. Is there any explanation? There is no explanation here. Not yet. It's too early. The cards are too fresh. Okay, everyone's like City of the Daleks. Uh so planes walk is did they explain that? Okay, so they do have these. Oh, so the, what does planeswalk mean? We can change the plane? Okay, plane Scaro. Whenever you attack, target opponent loses X life, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Ooh, that's busted. Uh, whenever chaos ensues. Chaos ensues? What is going on here? This is a real mechanic. For each opponent, you create a 3-3 black Dalek artifact creature token with menace that attacks that opponent this turn if able. Those tokens and gain haste, sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. This is broken. I think this is busted. Get out of here. Planeswalking is broke, which means this card is really strong, I think. Yes, you can change the plane to the next one in the plane deck. I didn't know we were even playing with plane chase, plane chase cards in the first place. This is a plane chase format? Yeah, plane chase cards. Some people are just learning about what plane chase cards are for the first time here. Okay, back to the super chats. The first, <laughs> little Mr. Doom is just trying to get all the doctors. The first doctor. 
13 Super Chats, 13 Doctors. Oh, this guy's from an old time period. Okay, blue, white, one generic uh, for a 2-2 Time Lord Doctor. When the first Doctor enters the battlefield, search your library and your graveyard for a card named TARDIS. Oh my god, it's Asmorandica Martigadassel Cool to Car. Reveal it, point into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle, and it can crew too. So do, I'm assuming all the Doctors can crew too. Unless there's like a flavor win by reducing the power and it never really could go through time. Uh, whenever you cast a spell with Cascade, put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature. I can see, like, if you get all the doctors out, they all have some sort of synergy with each other and buff each other up. In the show, did doctors, like, talk to other doctors? Like, they, can they go forward and backwards through time and, like, converse with each other? Yeah, if, I, if I'm in a rush, Asmorano's name's not going to get pronounced properly. Crocor Games, yes. Wow, the doctors. We are the squad of doctors. The doctors do meet from time to time. What a weird show. And they go forward and back this, backwards to the time. Shouldn't they just know how everything's going to be? Time travel, it's it's a hard storyline to get through, you know? There's all sorts of plot holes when you when you work with time travel. Uh, it's hard to make a... St I mean, you just have to assume, okay, it just works the way it does. Just enjoy the sh enjoy the movie or show, even though the it will make no damn sense. It never makes sense. <laughs> oh yes, they do. They shouldn't. Uh, uh, the the hold on. the doctors are basically the council of Rick. I don't well, I don't know what that is. Was like the council of Rick and Morty. Okay, next up, Alpha Nerd. Tardis, let's bring back the planeswalking. Sorry about that. You got stream sniped. Um, so we have to donate that super chat to we'll give it to Silvercations. Silvercations didn't get a card yet. The Cult of Scarrow. Did we do this one? The Cult? Uh, or is it Cult of Scarrow? Cult of Scarrow. Okay, we got a Grixis, one generic, four four. Legendary artifact creature Dalek. So it's just a bunch of these these 30s science fiction space robots. Does not look that intimidating, in my opinion. Beep boop beep. Whenever they attack, choose one at random. They put a plus one plus one counter on each artifact creature you control. Can draw two cards. That is okay. Drawing two cards. That's insane. It's not even an equipment. I thought there's like a squiddy thing on the inside of that thing. Draw two cards for attacking? What are you, insane? That is like, that's way more broken than Svelun, and that's already a one-sided howling mine. Sack, create a 3-3 black Dalek artifact creature token with menace, and last, each opponent loses four life. This card's ridiculous. This is, oh, it's at random. That's what they, uh, that's how they balanced it. Okay, so it's good. But maybe not completely broken. I'm like, <laughs> I'll draw two cards every turn. Thank you very much. They don't say peep, boop, peep. They say exterminate. 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 Beep, beep. Right, is this a card? RMS Titanic. Were they on the Titanic? What the hell is this? It's a Titanic in space. It's a red three generic seven. What, since when was the Titanic? Titanic is an ocean thing. It should be blue. I don't understand the red part of the Titanic. It's a 7-1 vehicle with flying and trample. Uh, when RMS Titanic deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it and create that many treasure tokens. That actually doesn't even make any sense. The Titanic's at the bottom of the ocean. What part of, what part of the lore of the Titanic is this? It was never part of the lore. This is where Nikachu starts bringing, <laughs> binging Doctor Who. Did they borrow the Titanic for a second? They turned it into a spaceship. Look at this. This is like an add-on to the Titanic. Or did they make a second one? It's blue in the water, but red in space. I suppose so. <laughs> they, they rebuilt it. We can build it better and bigger than ever before. And it won't hit a dam or a iceberg this time. Starbird! Asteroid straight ahead! And it still goes down. And it goes near a black hole. Aliens in space were obsessed with the Titanic and made a replica and then commit insurance spot? Are you serious? Well, how bizarre is this show? I'm surprised you're thinking this is... This is pretty weird! 
I think this is pretty weird. I mean, it's like bring it. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's a, the Titanic is like a really primitive ship. It's not even, it, it wasn't even designed very well. And they just sort of bring back this old crap design. It's like, you know, it's like taking, I don't know, like a standard deck from 1995 and then jamming a bunch of black lotuses and mocks in to make your crappy creatures and, you know, giant growths good or something. That's, that's the way I'm looking at it. I doubt any of this is airtight either. All right. We have more, more super chats. Steve Cooper. Flaming, ty flaming Tyrannosaurus. Ty Tyran yeah, Tyrannosaurus. I know nothing of Doctor Who. Neither do I. We have a red, red, five generic, five, five dinosaur. Do people like your dinosaurs? Well, they've put tons of dinosaurs now into this game. You can easily make a full on dinosaur deck. 5-5 five, five with Menace, with Paradox, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Flaming Tyrannosaurus deals 3 damage to any target. Then put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Flaming Tyrannosaurus. When it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. I think this is very clunky. Um, and it, like the... You have to be able to cast spells from like Suspend, basically. Or from Exile in order to get like a really good get anything out of this. I think it's just a little too clunky for my taste. The dino is so hot right now. Oh yeah, it's it's literally on fire. It is a it is a flaming. It's like, hey, can anyone like scratch my back or put this thing out, please? Maybe a delve deck. No, it has to be like flashback. Like delve delve is still being cast from your hand. So flashback works. Fortell works. Um I guess it combos with that red card, that enchantment, right? So you play cards from your graveyard for the rest of the game. It's still seven mana, five five. It's a lot of, it's a lot, a lot you gotta build and work around. Jurassic Park seven. The roaming dinosaurs <laughs> are now on fire, and they're born that way. It's like a, it's a real life Charmander, or uh, or Charizard. No, I think only the tail is on fire. But whatever, you basically get the gist. Real life Charizard that doesn't fly. No, okay, so it has to be not Charmander, but Charmeleon. Charmeleon would be good. Charmeleon don't fly yet. Uh, okay, let's look at the next. Oh, yeah, also Cascade works. Cascade. I don't know how many red Cascade cards there are out there. Alpha Nerd! You love Doctor Who. Okay, last one. Sonic Screwdriver. Looks like some. This looks like one of those tools they use at the dentist. We have a three mana artifact tapped at one mana of any color. All right, so they're trying to boost these three mana mana rocks. Uh, pay one tap. Untap another target artifact. That's broken. Uh, it's a. It's just another damn to like Voltaic key, but it costs three mana. So it's a Voltaic key that adds mana, and it and it has two other abilities attached to it. It's pay two tap scry one. Pay three target creature can't be blocked this turn. This card's great. Absolutely great. I would I, I would almost say if you're already playing three mana like mana rocks to some degree, this is an instant include. Like you can't you can't not play this card. And you'll have so much extra mana with your soul rings, your mana vaults, mana crypts, and so on. The card is spicy. Or is it like pay pay two? Yeah, yeah, it makes extra mana uh with soul ring. Because I think well this thing makes mana itself, but no, Quan, Quan, Quantum Misalignment. Yeah, a blue four generic sorcery created token. That's a copy of target creature you control, except it it's, it isn't legendary. Did we do this one? I guess we had something similar where it was like a creature in play that made tokens. And it's got rebound. If you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. I would say this is like a funsy card. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's terribly bad, though. Okay, next super chat. We're going to Jess. Thanks for doing this show. You better believe it. Uh, on holiday. Happy. Oh, a happy. Give it. You mean Thanksgiving? It's Canadian Thanksgiving today. That's right. We do it like a whole month early compared to you, uh, you Americans. Old boy has in German we call something like this the egg laying wool's milk swine. I've well I can't relate. <laughs> Not in Germany. 
Okay, good intentions. The curse of, uh, the curse of Frenric. Curse of something. Whoops. The curse of something. Or I guess it's not the. Is this no. This is a Crimson Vow card. Okay. Can't find it. Sorry. Termus. The Beast. Deathless, Deathless Prince. That's a card. Okay, we have a red, black, two generic, six, six demon. This thing's enormous. It's like the Balrog. When you cast this spell, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it. Uh, it gains menace and haste until end of turn. It's just another one of those creature stealing things, which is very pathetic. Okay, the beast enters the battlefield tapped with six stun counters on it. It would be... What? If it become untapped, remove a stun counter from it instead. That's also terrible. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to its owner, untap the beast and draw a card. I don't like this card. Like, basically no one attacks you. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to its owner, somehow you need to ping yourself to make this thing work, which I guess it's possible. I don't know. Maybe you guys know how to build around the beast. Like you, no one's going to attack you because then they, they they know that you can untap this thing and draw a card. And it's a six six. No one wants to get attacked for us from a six six commander. Do I play the Pokemon TCG? No, I haven't played that thing competitively for like 25 years. Move to Magic, didn't look back. Also, all the stores, or the very few stores that existed, banned anyone over the age of 13 so that the kids could, uh, sorry, over the age of 12 so they could let the kids play. Be specific, there was only one game store that did that, but it was the only game store playing the Pokemon TCG at the time. All right, let's go to Little Mr. Doom. Uh, visor, visor, turlo. Okay, black three generic, uh, two five rogue. Deal with the black guardian. You deal with it. When Vizlor Turlo enters the battlefield, you may have an opponent gain control of it. If you do, it's goaded for as long as they control it. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Um, Do they draw a card? Then you lose life equal to the number of cards. Oh, okay. So it is a way of trying to kill the opponent, sort of? I don't get this card. I don't think you get to draw the card. Like, the person you give it to gets it, and they draw the card. Losing card. Like, you're not going to die to this thing. You're just going to empty your hand as quickly as possible. Let's ban people with hate. I didn't have a job at the time. I didn't have a job. I was like a broke 13-year-old kid. I did. I just didn't meet the bar. They did the statistics. All the all the teenagers and above won all the tournaments, and those kids were cheating. I had to call a judge so many times on those kids. Whatever. Not all the kids were cheating, but they were all they're all very very casual. I will say this: none of them net decked. All right. The teen. The difference between the teenagers and the kids is we net. The teenagers net decked. That's the difference. Uh, anyway, I have no idea. This is just a jank card. You want to have fun? Go for it. Okay, so let's... But I, I, I would argue this card seems pretty bad. Don't gift it, and it's very expensive Frexian Arena. Not unless you're empty-handed. Not unless you're empty-handed. It's a Frexian Arena on a creature. Uh, okay, next up, Little Mr. Doom. Planeswalk. Oh, this is, like, really late. Planeswalk and Chaos ensues are mechanics from Plane Chase. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's donate your... Thank you very much for the super chat. Let's donate it to Vitor with four knocks. See for yourself. Four knocks. Is that like a code? Knock, 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 knock. It's a glass door. It's a white two generic enchantment with vanishing four. That's a, Now that's a keyword I haven't heard in a long time. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, draw a card. So... Weird. Okay, so you just basically draw... It's, um... I don't even know what to compare this to. You draw an extra four cards, effectively. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. But not even this turn. Next turn you lose... Is it, uh... At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter on it. When the last is removed... Oh, you only draw three cards. So it's not one of those things. If you can't remove one, it gets sacrificed. Yeah, uh, four, draw three. 
It's three mana draw three, but over many t turns, I don't like it. I mean, maybe there's some way you can reanimate from the graveyard and have another one or whatever, but uh, doesn't seem to... Wait, I guess it's card draw. You know, I forgot about that. You white players, you looking for card draw? Well, this is the closest damn thing you'll ever get. This is the hard, raw card draw. A little slow. All right. You know, wait next turn. We're going to wait another turn. You might have to take extra turns, but uh, you will get that investment. No, you draw three. So if if it was, I thought it was worded like fading. Is fading the one I'm thinking of? Where um, if you can't remove a counter, then you sacrifice it. But here, when you remove the last counter, you sacrifice it. So what it is, is it's vanishing four. Then your next turn happens. You remove a counter. It's now at three. Um, one, three, two, yeah. Yeah, you would remove the... So I guess it would stay on the board until the next turn. Because you only get... You get to draw the card at your pre-combat main phase. I think you still... Okay, hold on. Let's, let's count. Okay, it's at four. Then at three, I draw a card. At two, I draw a card. At one, I draw a card. At zero, it gets sacrificed. So three, two, one. We draw cards. But then if you have proliferate, it's... I guess you get it for forever. All right. So maybe this card works. I don't, know, I don't really like it. I'm sure someone can make use of this card. It's not terrible. You draw four, drop it with four, draw until, draw all. No, you don't. Because you have to do it at the beginning. Can you play this at your draw step? I don't think you can. Because it, it checks at the beginning of your first pre-combat main phase. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Oh, sorry, there's only one pre-combat main phase draw card. But if you play it after combat draw, th no, no, you do, you never draw at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. You will not draw a card on the first turn. Yeah, you can, however, flash if you can flash in enchantments. You can do it at your draw step. So then that will work. That's your only window. But you have to be able to play in. You need a ley line of anticipation in play, and it will work. You just draw it, and then oh, at my draw step, play four knocks, and then draw a card immediately. Okay, next we got Cro. Okay, we gotta get to some of these super chats. Croker Games. I'm a huge Doctor Who nerd. According to Doctor Who, they forget when they meet themselves. That's weird. Also, uh, Alonzi is French for let's go donate to chat. All right, Alonzi. We're gonna donate to low. We'll give it to loading. Uh, Davros, Dalek Creator. It's the beep boop machine guy. The leader of the beep boops. Okay, we got uh, red, black, blue, one generic for a 3-4 alien scientist with menace. At the beginning of your end step, create a 3-3 three, three black Dalek artifact creature token with menace. If an opponent lost three or more life this turn, then each opponent who lost three or more life this turn faces a villainous choice. You draw a card or that player discards a card. That's a card, it's okay. It's okay. It creates, it's it's a little underwhelming, I think, for Commander, but maybe one on one, it's stronger. Leader of the Roomba. That's right, the Roombas. It's kind of pointless. But how much? Because in any deck you play this in, it's never going to run out of time counters. True. In a, yeah, in any deck, in any Doctor Who deck, you're basically going to have unlimited time counters. The proliferate players are all over this. I don't know if we did Missy. Okay, hold on. You guys want Missy? It's Mary Poppins! I feel like this show adopted so much from other, like, uh, other stories. And I haven't even seen the show. Okay, we have Grixis 3 generic, 4 5 for a Time Lord Rogue. Whenever another non -artif non artifact creature dies, returns to the battlefield under your control, face down and tapped. It's a 2 2 Cyberman artifact creature that's meant to be blinked. It's a good, I think this is a good ability. I actually think this is busted. Like, so basically nothing dies. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent faces a villainous choice. Each artifact creature you control deals one damage to that opponent. Or you each, on, each artifact creature you control deal one damage to that opponent. Or you draw a card in chaos and... What is this? This card's insane. Ian at six mana. She's not evil. She looks evil. She's on the Grixis side. We don't, this is the Palpatine side. It's the, yeah, Dark Mary Poppins. Evil Mary Poppins. All right, we got uh, moving on to King Ginger. Uh, Ashad. 
The Lonely Siren. We are going to be doing this for forever. This is going to be a long show. Hope you're all buckled in for a long one here. Okay, uh, there's a lot of Grixis cards. Grixis, one generic. Where's the Selesnya cards? It's a 3-3 Cyberman. It's a Cyborg. Uh, it's like Iron Man meets the Borg or something like that. The first non-legendary artifact spell you cast each turn has casualty too. The keywords on this, as you cast it, you may sacrifice a creature with power two or greater. When you do copy it, a copy of an artifact spell becomes a token. You know, it's funny, a long time ago, they made so many like vanilla creatures because they were scared that they would intimidate too many players with like how wordy the game was and like all the mechanics and stuff. And now they're just like full on blast. Let's just throw as many keywords on these damn things as possible. People don't care. They love them. The more words, the better. Get out your dictionary. Get out Google. And then whenever you sacrifice another creature, put a plus one plus one counter on a shod, the lone Cyberman. The first non legendary creature it was... Uh... I don't really like this card all that much. I got to sack a creature. When you do copy it, a copy of an artifact spell becomes a token. Whatever. And you sack another creature, you get a counter on this thing. I might be underestimating how big this thing can get. Like, I, I don't know how this works. This is one of those cards, I gotta see it to believe it, but I, I could, but the problem is the first card has casualty too, but then whenever you sack another creature for any reason, like with Croc Clan Ironworks, for example, um, uh, this thing gets bigger and can maybe just kill you in one shot. I don't know if you noticed, but all the numbered doctors have blue in their color identity. War Doctor and Fugitive Doctor are the exceptions. Aha. Any squirrels in the set? Not likely. There's dinosaurs, though. And aliens. Play artifact creatures and sag to make more copies of artifact creatures. All right. Ashad gets the pass. Uh, okay, next super chat. Cyberman Patrol. Is Afflict old? If yes, flavor win. Two mana. This is just weird. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Cybermen. Artifact creatures you control have Afflict 3. It's like, now a new game. Where did this keyword come from? I believe it came from uh, Hour of Devastation? You block the thing, they lose life. Obey or you will be destroyed. Obey or you will be destroyed. Obey or it's like Mars attacks all over again. Do I have a sort of a Mars attack? Sound effect here. No, I don't. I got nothing. That's okay. Can we please check the out Solemn Simulacrum new art? Are you serious? Solemn Simulacrum. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't... This looks like some sort of robot that I've seen from some sort of tech company. Or maybe I'm thinking of some sort of movie. I have no idea. Anyway, there's some simulacrum from Doctor Who. Okay, next... Hold on, what, what did this card do? Cyberman Patrol. I give it... I. It's not past. It's a very unexciting creature. Very, very unexciting. Laser screwdriver, it's companion. Are you serious? The laser. Did we see laser screwdriver? We saw some screwdriver. Oh, the laser screwdriver. Oh, you gotta you need a super chat sound effect. So this is the opposite. This is uh okay, so it's three mana out of mana, but you can pay a one tap tap target artifact, including artifact creatures. Pay two tap surveil. Look at the top card of your library, put it into your graveyard, or pay three and go to creature. I'm not in love with it. Like the card is fine. I think three mana for all these abilities, I'm not excited for. I would rather be making more mana than tapping other people's mana or tapping stuff. But like it's it's like a decent chunk of interaction. It's okay. The OG uh, art of Sim Solemn Simulac Simulacrum was called Sad Robot, and the new art has a sad emoji face. Oh, really? You're right. <laughs> it's a sad robot all over again. It's a sad robot. 
Uh, all right, we got next is Fulva's Bane. Vashta. Narada, good for my Volroth sh uh, Shape Stealer deck. Okay, we have a black two generic one one alien horror. The aliens are all humanoid for some reason. Indestructible with shadow. Can't be blocked or it can only block creatures with shadow and no one else can block it. Unless it has shadow. Okay, morbid. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Nashta Nerada. Interesting card. I like it. It's indestructible. Uh unblockable. Oh, it's not legendary. Whatever, I think it's cool. And it's like at the beginning of each end step. Oh, you know what? It's like a little slow. I guess it can get a counter every single turn for as long as something dies every turn. Exiling things doesn't count. It has shadow because I will. You know what? Oh, hold on. Uh, it has shadow because the Nashta and Rada are literally shadows. The flavor. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, so it's not that space thing here. It's this shadowy thing over here. I will say, being indestructible is a bit of a non-bow with shadow because you can't block creatures, damn it. Like, what's the point of being indestructible when you can't block anything? All right, cool stuff. Next super chat, we've got Gorlod, the master multiplied. We did that one, Gorlod, sorry. Uh, so we're gonna donate your super chat to who are we donating it to? Who's still mentioning names of cards out here? Uh, here, Tavishel is still on it. Uh, Madame Vasta. Vastra. A Simic card. It's uh, blue, green, two generic for a 3 3 Lizard Detective. Partner with Jenny Flint. When this creature enters the battlefield, target player may uh, put a Jenny Flint card in their hand. Uh, from their library, then shuffle. Oh, what? You? It, this is different. Okay, so enters the battlefield. Target player, being you, may put Jenny Flint into their hand from their library, then shuffle. So this is not like a comp this is not like a companion. You just scoop up another card from your deck. Oh, I didn't think that's how it worked. Okay, Madame ba uh, Vastra must be blocked if able. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Madame Vastra, this turn dies. Create a clue token and a food token. Food, you gain three life. Clue, you draw a card. But you don't, it's not super easy card draw. I don't know how good Jenny Flint is. This is always how partner has worked, really. When I'm playing one-on-one -on -one commander online, like literally the partners are in the command zone. They can just play them from the command zone, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, hold on. Let's look up Jenny Flint. Huh, we got red, blue, one generic, two, two human detective. Partner with Madame Va uh, Vastra. First strike training. When this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a counter on this creature. Whenever you sacrifice a clue or food, put a counter on another target creature you control. Honestly, I think this is a dirt. These are dirtly partners. They're just. It's just dirtle stuff. So you like the. If you like the dirtle, <laughs> go for it. It's a dirtle. It's a dirtling pair. You get to play with. Do you like playing with uh, Teamer? That's basically what's going on over here. And I guess if you can, like, copy the tokens, maybe it's cool. This is partner, not with. So this is partner with, not partner. Oh, my God. Are, are you kidding me? How how am I supposed... The, the with... The with isn't even capitalized. That should be a completely separate uh, ability. Look, I'm a pretty seasoned competitive player that's been playing for like 20 years and I can make this mistake. I, how, how do they expect like random people off the street to know that as well? Like if you just, if you, I don't know, if you're a pretty new player to the game, you found out what partner was. Well, I mean, they're, they're sort of specific in here, but not with Jenny Flint, it just says partner. We're partner with Madame v Vastra. Uh, uh, I guess they only need the keyword on one of them, so eventually they'll figure it out. Oh yeah, it's like the same thing with bands, right? Banding and bands with. Yeah, they've they've made this mistake before. It's not bands with, not banding. Yeah, it's yeah, it's bands with, not a banding. Perhaps they should have picked. Yeah, they should just pick another keyword, like. 
I want to say partners again. Like, partner is such a good... Teammates! Teammate. Or team. Team with Jenny Flint. I figured it out. I've solved it. I've solved it all. Okay, next we go Alpha Nerds. River Songs Diary. Uh, three mana for a... Artifact imprint when a player casts an instant or sorcery spell from their hand exile it instead of putting it into a graveyard as it resolves At the beginning of your upkeep if there are four or more cards exiled with rivers songs diary choose one of them at random You may cast it without paying its mana cost uh, This reminds me of another card where you cast a spell it gets exiled and then you have to play like a spell Randomly exiled with the card in play jank. It's all jank It's fine if you like jank and stuff Big danger. You think this is dangerous? Let me upkeep if there are four more cards. Choose one of them at random. Oh, this is only on one side. So uh, they get their spell, it resolves, but it resolves into this thing, and you randomly get a card uh, every turn. But that's it. I still think it's jank. Does this diary go whoop, whoop, whoop when you open it? I don't know. Is that a sound effect it makes in the, mo in the, in the show? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Every player? Beginning of your, your upkeep. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four more cards exiled with this thing, you may cast it with it. It's only you only get once each turn. Yeah, every player. Whenever a ca player casts, every player. That's fine. I don't think it's that broken. Like you're just gonna get a random weird card. Anyway, you guys think this is amazing? Go for it. I think it's not reliable. That's not reliable card advantage around here. You have things to do. You spent three mana on this damn thing. Read imprints. I know. Okay, you proved me wrong, Crow Core Games. You proved me wrong. This is a janky. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Or and if it becomes a problem, they'll destroy it. Remember, it's random. You rolled the dice. Uh, okay. Uh, we did River Song's Diary. Now let's go to Little Mister Doom. We've done this. We're done this. Let's do this one. Me, the immortal. There's a lot of me, the immortals. It's all the same card, right? Okay, for uh, Teamer and two Generic, we have a 3-3 Human Rogue. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put it your choice of a plus one plus one counter, a First Strike, Vigilance, or Menace counter on me, the Immortal. Uh, counters remain on me as it moves to any zone other than a player's hand or library. Uh, it's a boost. Oh, wow! That is that is very unusual. So if you have like a billion plus one plus one counters, if it dies, you put it in the graveyard with the counters. Now we're going straight into AI. Gener they, the AI taught them this. I swear, people. The AI probably gave them this idea. So you may cast me from your graveyard by discarding two cards in addition to paying other costs. That's also great. So you can just keep perpetually paying five mana, but just do it for uh, whatever cards. Your, okay, so at the beginning of combat on your turn, you just get one of these random abilities. So it's this card is very resilient, but the card's not really that powerful. First strike, vigilance, not indestructible. You get menace, a counter. I think this is just okay. It's just you know, it's a fine card. <laughs> that her senior yearbook picture? It's could possibly. Carpet of Flowers, just more mono blue hate. Well, I have some news for you. This is an old card. See, this thing came out from Urza Saga. It's been destroying me ever since. So, uh, it's just a reprint. <laughs> if you thought this was a new card, well, I have some news for you. It, was always, it always was there. It's always existed. It's just reprinted now. Steve Cooper, donation for chat. Who wants a donate? Who wants a donation? Oh, let's see. Is there anyone mentioning cards? I don't think Toad's got a card today. The Veil Yard. Uh, who the hell is this? It's a Grixis 2 generic 4-5 Time Lord Noble. If an opponent would face a villainous choice, they face that choice an additional time. While voting, you may vote an additional time. Oh, Palpatine would be proud. Because Palpatine loves democracy. Especially if it's cheating in democracy. This is the seventh doctor? 
Oh no, that's, this is a card you want to see. <laughs> Can I join this cult? I have no I I've... Uh, anyway, uh, is the card good? It only has synergy with other villainous choice cards. Whenever voting, I think it's just more of a... More of a jank card. More of on the janky side. Erwin Lopez. Happy day and Thanksgiving! Enjoy your Tim Hortons. You're welcome. Honestly, I spend more time at McDonald's than Tim Hortons these days, but whatever. Okay, hold on. Uh, which doctor do you want? Emerald, we're going to give the super chat to you, the seventh doctor. Good day, everybody. I am the seventh doctor for a blue, white, three generic. I'm a three, five time lord doctor. Whenever it attacks, choose a card in your hand. Defending player guesses whether that card's mana value is greater than the number of artifacts you control. If they guessed wrong, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. So it's like 50-50? Or maybe not. You can take a good guess based on the number of artifacts in play. If you don't cast a spell this way, investigate. Definitely, I think, some 50... When it attacks, so you have to attack. So you get a little something no matter what, or you like it's also a 50-50 shot that you like put something directly in, onto the battlefield, you omniscience it into play. I think it's like I don't know. Not in love with this one. Not not in love. It's the Riddler, but they couldn't get Batman IP. <laughs> oh yeah, the question mark Kane. That's right. It's alternate universe uh Riddler. So weird. Okay, next super chat, because I have, still have many of them. Dark Star Ashura. Has Barbara Wright been looked at? We have. Great with Narsi, uh, Fable Singer from Commander Masters. We have done Barbara Wright, so we're going to donate your super chat. Let's give one to Christopher B. Christopher B is working really hard here. Uh, ominous Cemetery. Was the cemetery going to come alive? Ominous cemetery. Oh, it's a land. I like my lands. Ta uh, tap add a colorless. Pay five. Tap exile ominous cemetery. Target creatures owners owners shuffle into their library. Target creatures. Oh, that's removal. That's insane. Whoops. This is a removal. Anyone can play. It's a bit expensive. Like it's six mana. Effectively, it's like five mana, and you have to exile the land. But like, hey, it's a free roll, right? It's a free roll. The statues. Oh, I swear that statue moved. All right. Uh, <laughs> I can tell there's a lot of Doctor Who fans in chat. A lot of Doctor Who fans. Okay, we did Barbara right. Now let's go let look at Little Mister Doom. It's basically the show ends when the super chats end. They reprinted the Fiery Islet lands, lands. Imagine good lands in precons. Um, the, the Horizon Lands, you mean. Fiery Island. Yeah. We need to see the Doctor Who one. All the enemy ones. So pay one tap, so you can tap, pain yourself for this dual land, or pay one tap, sack and draw a card. Do people like the Horizon Lands in Commander? I, mean, I guess it's like, it's like a free roll. Well, I don't know about a free roll, but like, uh, hey, you need them dual, you need dual lands. And you like drawing cards? Well, I got a card for you, Fiery Islet. One damage? Pfft, I got 40. Who cares? Restian, uh, Restian Serpentine with Flaming Tyrannosaurus. We did that one. We did Flaming Tyrannosaurus. So we're gonna donate your super chat to... Cooked uh, Clive, the girl in the fireplace. Is she dead now? Okay, we have a white two generic uh, saga. Chapter one, create a one one white human noble creature token with vanishing three and prevent all common damage that would be dealt to this creature. Uh, that is a very weird, weak creature. We have chapter two, create a two two white horse creature token with doctors you control have horsemanship. They really are just trying to bring all the old keywords together. Like Doctor Who just goes across the history of humanity and so they're going across the history of Magic the Gathering. Never did I think a set could have shadow, cascade, and horsemanship all in one. And then we have chapter three. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player this turn, time travel. I think... 
So if you're in a heavy doctor deck, I mean, it would be good for the changeling deck because by chapter two, they all are unblockable. But I don't, I don't trust this card. I don't know. I don't know if I can trust this damn thing. Yeah, it's literally every, every mechanic. Where's banding? Old fogey is relevant now, all of a sudden. Yeah, support for old ar archetypes, old mechanics. Lore and episode reasons. Uh, Emperor! How about displaced dinosaurs? Where do they get displaced? In space? We got a green, green, five generic, seven, seven dinosaur. How many dinosaurs are in? It's, it's the, one of the doctors go back in time and bring dinosaurs to the future? It's like Jurassic. <laughs> well, I have a park. We're going to bring dinosaurs. It's like Jurassic Park, but the park owner can go back in time. And the park is basically just the Earth, just like uh, a few million years ago. Okay, as, as a historic permanent enters the battlefield under your control, it becomes a 7-7 dinosaur creature in addition to its other types. That's insane! But it's a 7-mana seven 7-7. Seven, seven. So historic permanent enters the battlefield. So any artifact becomes... Uh, I think it's good! This is very expensive, but like you can make artifacts like crazy through like clues, treasures, um, food... And they're all seven sevens. You'll have like it's so easy to just rebuild. If you if your board got wiped out, you just rebuild your army of dinosaurs. Legendary land, yeah. Legendary land turns into a seven seven. Oh, is that right? Uh, as a historic permanent enters the battlefield, it becomes a seven seven dinosaur. Oh, good God, it's insane. Okay, uh, we're gonna go next to Crowcore Games. The five doctors, all five at once, huh? Green, five generic sorcery with a kicker of five. Search a library or and or graveyard for up to five doctor cards. Reveal them and put them into your hand. If you search a library this way, shuffle. If the spell, if this spell was kicked, put those cards onto the battlefield uh, instead of putting them into your hand. Now that card is good. It's 11 mana, but you better believe you can get that mana. Like, mana is not really a bottleneck in, in Commander too much, especially if it's just like one color. If it's a bunch of generic mana, you can make... Generic mana is basically free in this game. So you're basically saying, I'm tutoring out five cards... You look for... F you're tutoring five cards into play for five mana. So it's like two mana a card on average. Or what is this? It's not actually two mana a card. Hold on. Let's do the math. I got math. Okay, we're getting five. We have five cards. How much mana is this costing us? Six. Oh, it's 11 mana. Okay. 11 mana divided by five. 2.2. 2.2 mana card. Very, very good. Okay, this wasn't a super chat, but I want to look at this one. Sisterhood of Karn. It cannot be the same Karn. Okay, it's not the same card. Green one generic zero zero cleric. Sisterhood of Karn enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. Paradox, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, double the number of plus one plus one counters on Sisterhood of Karn. Enters the battlefield. I don't like it. Jank. Too janky. Not gonna be Tarmogoyf anytime soon. All right, Platonic Lico. See, these super chats are, are like, like an hour old. Oh no, they're maybe, maybe this one's not that old. Okay, uh, waiting for the MTG Star Wars set in 2028. <laughs> I will donate your super chat. Yeah, MT. Yeah, Star Wars is gonna come back in an MTG form. See, Star Wars, you couldn't survive as your own TCG, but in the form of Magic: The Gathering, you'll be eternal. Uh, Sasa says you cannot put into play ones you already have in hand when the spell resolves, so it's kind of tricky. Well, what? Uh, well, whatever. You have like 13 doctors probably in your deck. No big deal. You're gonna have all 13 in your hand. Okay, let's look at Sophia Cook, Traverse Eternity. We have blue, blue, two generic sorcery. Draw cards equal to the highest mana value among historic permanents you control. Ooh, interesting. So for four mana, you could in theory get like, what, six cards from a gigantic... Oh no, it could be even just a legendary creature. This is not bad. I think this is pretty good. It's sorcery, which is a little awkward, but I think it's pretty good. 
Steam Rat says, have we done Amy Pond? Nope, I don't even know who this is. We've got a red 2 generic 2-2 two, two human partner with Rory Williams. When Amy Pond deals damage to a player, choose a suspended card you own and remove that many time counters from it. How many time counters? When deals Oh, equal to the damage dealt by Amy Pond, which is going to be like two and hitting. Removing two time counters is basically good as nothing. I mean, sorry, it's, it's, it's like as good as casting the whole card. It's not many suspend counters on a whole lot of cards. Doctor's Companion. I would say this card is... This card is like in the jank category. Uh, the ability is okay, but you need to play with like a lot of suspend cards, and those are pretty clunky. On the other hand, this can be your commander, so who cares? Uh, next super chat, we've got Emperor... How about all of history all at once? All of history all at once. Good God, what is go what is what is going on in this uh, image here? We've got dinosaurs. We got I don't know. A or do, or do, oh, we assume we have aliens somewhere in this picture. We have a gigantic elephant, and we also have a bunch of balloons. Blue, blue, two generic. Sorcery. Time travel. For each suspended card you own and each permanent you control with a time counter on it, you may add or remove a time counter. And it's got Storm. Ah, it's a little bit of a jank card. I don't The Storm is probably not that relevant. I don't even know why you need to Storm this thing. Just play the Amy Pond. I think Amy Pond's going to do just as good of a job than any removing time counters from your stuff. Dancing Odie. Uh, finally made it. Uh... But only for my lunch. Just wanted to say hi. Donate the super chat to a regular chatter. Oh, thank you so much, Dancing Odie. You're so, so generous. The coffee crew looking out for their own kind. Uh, okay, so what is a suit? You guys really want this canine card. Canine, Mark I, Doggo. We got a Doggo in the, in the, in the game. It's a robot. It's a Roomba Doggo. It's a blue 1-1 one, one robot dog. Negative. As long as K9 Mark I is untapped. Or is it Mark I or Mark 1? Okay, I, I'm assuming it's K9 Mark 1 uh, is untapped. Other legendary creatures you control have Ward 1. That's great. I like that. Affirmative. Blue 1 generic tap. Target legendary creature. Can't be blocked this turn. Doctor's Companion. I like this card. I like it a lot, actually. It's Mark 1. All right. Not to be not to be confused with Mark Two. It I like it. We got one blue one. Now all I need this on a Merfolk to do the same damn thing. And it says all my Merfolk get Ward One. I'd prefer actually Ward Two to be honest. Ward One for one man. It's still probably not good enough, but whatever. We're gonna take what they give us. Steve Cooper, Weeping Angel. Black, blue, one generic, two, two, alien angel with flash and flying and vigilance. Whenever an opponent casts a creature spell, weeping angel isn't a creature until end of turn. Well, then what is it? It's just nothing? If weeping angel would deal combat damage to a creature, prevent that damage, and that creature creature's owner shuffles it into their library? What the hell is this doing? Like, I don't understand these cards. Okay, if it if it would deal combat damage to a creature, oh, not to a player, to a creature, prevent the damage in the creature's owner shuffle. Okay, so if I deal damage to a creature, goodbye creature, it gets shuffled away. And oh, so if it, if it's not a creature, it's just an artifact. Oh, it's the statues that come to life and then what they stay still sometimes. Is that the gimmick? I'm assuming that's the gimmick. Well, hello there, fur it is. Well, hello. It'll just turn into an artifact uh, for the turn opponents cast a spell. Cool. Although, I have to say, is it until end of turn? I have to say, if they're casting creature spells, it's not that relevant. Oh, I guess if they catch a creature spell, you can't block with this anymore. Which makes it very bad at blocking. Okay. No, uh, very awkward, janky. Oh, but it has flash. But everyone knows you can cast it. Oh, no, they don't. It's not legendary. Okay, so it's a good card. It passes. I think it's good. Cool card. I think. 
it, it's not flying. It's first stroke. Oh, it does not fly. Oh, yeah, it's first. It's not. Well, it's not first stroke. It's first strike. Oh, you're right. Okay, first strike and vigilance. The Weeping Angel. Dark Star Ashura. Regeneration's restored. I did not spell any of this right. Okay, white, blue, enchantment. Vanishing 12. Oh, God. No wonder they have all these mechanics of removing time counters. This better do something big. When one or more time counters are removed from regenerations restored. Scry 1, you gain a life. You got some life gain, you see? Whenever one or more time counter... Okay, uh, then if regenerations restored has no time counters on it, exile it. When you do, take an extra turn after this one. That is great, but it takes 12 turns. You're not going to get that extra turn. I swear, it's not happening. Unless you can remove all the time counters. You really have to build your deck around Doctor Who to make this thing work. I really don't think I've he heard this song go on for this long before. You mean the show? People want Rory Williams. What's Rory Williams? It's a blue white 3 3 legendary human soldier. Partner with Amy Pond. Uh, first Strike Lifelink. The Last Centurion. Uh, when you cast the spell from anywhere other than exile, exile it with three time counters on it. It gains the spend that investigate. Uh, what? So I cast it for two mana, but I don't actually get it for two mana? So I cast it, if I cast this spell from anywhere other than exile, so I have to cast it. Oh, but exile, hold on, but the command zone isn't considered exile, right? Or, or is it? I don't understand this card. It sounds like every single time I pay two mana for this thing, and it's only a first strike lifelinker. Why do I want to time counter it? Unless it's just strictly for flavor. But Amy helps remove the time counters. Okay. So we're trying to save Rory Williams. We're going to save you, Rory. Anyway, uh, this is absolute garbage. <laughs> This looked real. This looked honestly. Even if you don't exile the time, if you even if you don't suspend this damn card, uh, it's really not that exciting. Even as a two, two, three, three, first strike life linker, not that ex not exciting. The command zone is the command zone. It's considered the command zone, even in exile. I'm assuming the command zone is just the command zone. If you cast it from the command zone, it triggers for free and may get exiled or put into command zone or exile. Oh, so you want to cast it for two and just investigate, but then you cast for four afterwards? I forgot you could uh, keep putting it back in the command zone. Weird rules looping going on over there. We're not done. Hold on, I need another song here. Let's get... Ah, this one's fine. I like the fighting songs. Little Mr. Doom, you, I, I could have swore you said you were done with the super chats, but you're back. Uh, or maybe it was the other person. Uh, the card, all of history, all at once has great art. We did that one. You got stream sniped. Sorry, Mr. Little Mr. Doom. So we're gonna give to Avatar. Whoa, Sarah Jane. There's always a Jane in every movie and TV show, and here it is here. Sarah Jane Smith. A white, one generic, two, one human detective. Whenever you cast a historic spell, investigate. The ability triggers only once each turn. And then Doctor's Companion. That's it. It's okay. It's cheap. It's value. I like it. I cast Rory, and when it goes into exile, I put it into the command zone. Exactly. But don't you... Hold on, but... Hold on. I have a question with this. Don't you have to pay the commander tax afterwards, or you don't? I'm assuming you have to pay whenever the commander has to get put it back into the command zone. You have to keep paying that commander tax. So it's like two mana to investigate. That's going to be four, then six, then eight. I don't know. Is that worth it? I don't think so. Okay, little Mr. Doom, you had a backup super chat. My last is your last, the very last is going to be Adric, mathematical genius. Oops, not Sarah Adric, just Adric. What's going on here? Okay, give me Adric, damn it. Okay, we got Adric. Mathematical genius for a blue one generic. A 1-1 one, one human artificer. Pay a blue two generic. Copy target activator triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. That is a very janky ability. Uh, ultimate sacrifice. Pay a blue one generic. 
Sacrifice Adra. Counter target activated or triggered ability. That is actually more useful than it looks. Sadly, we have to sacrifice the whole creature. And Doctor's Companion. Do you want to like this overall? Maybe it's more playable than I think. And it's like, it's a counter spell I can keep bringing back to the battlefield over and over again. This card doesn't add up. I don't get it. Why? Deserve better? Oh, is this like a really popular uh, character on the show? They didn't do justice to Adric. All right, moving on. Andre! Okay, Blake, did you do Me the Immortal? Yes. Uh, I show her name was... In the show, her name was Ashildr... Ashil Doctor, and was played by Maisie Williams. Uh, we did do Me the Immortal. Can't remember if that was a great card or not. I've looked at so many cards here today. Okay, we have a new... Okay, so we'll donate it to some 124C with Idris, Soul... Is there another Idris card? Idris, Soul of the TARDIS. So this woman is the soul of like the time traveling phone booth? She is one, it's like, it's like the ring and Sauron. They are one with each other. And, and the phone booth survived. <laughs> okay, red, blue, one generic, three, three, human incarnation, vanish three, with imprint. A creature with imprint? And enters the battlefield, exile another artifact you control until Idris leaves the battlefield. Idris has all activated and triggered abilities of the exiled card and gets plus, plus X plus X, where X is the exiled card's mana value. Yes. I was dead on right. See, they stole that from Lord of the Rings. They're like, well, if Sauron can be bound to a ring, then certainly a human being can be bound to a phone booth. They were on the phone for so long, they became one with each other. The phone booth is bigger on the inside. Of course. Um, I think this card is good though. If you get all activated abilities of the card, uh, it's not that bad. I, I like it actually. Although I, oh no, it has vanishing three. Whatever, you just replay and get another, get another card to imprint on top, on top of the damn thing. What do you happens if you imprint with a card with imprint? Well, we must go deeper. Imprintception. All right, thank you very much for the super chats. Okay, Emperor! Remember, time travel can also add counters to stuff with Vanishing, like, say, four Nox, which you already saw. Ah, yes. So we can also add counters to Vanishing so that she doesn't go, she doesn't disappear for forever. So we gotta, uh, we're gonna donate the super chat to Loading with Renegade Silent. Hello, would you like, would you like to hear, would you like to hear about the good book of Mars? Okay, blue, three generic for a three, three alien horror. At the beginning of your end step, goad up to one target creature you don't control and put a plus one, plus one counter on Renegade Silent. Renegade Silent phases out. I don't like it. So you get this ability only once every like second turn, like every other turn. You go to create, ah, I don't care for this card. Little jank, a little too janky for me. And Steve Cooper! Extending the show by a bit with donation to chat. You guys love your you love your Doctor Who. No wonder they did this thing. They did some market research and find out everybody loves uh, Doctor Who. Okay, bigger. Oh, it's literally bigger on the ins. Oh, you guys. See, all the names of these cards sound like just random regular phrases. They don't sound like Magic the Gathering names. That's why I need you guys to put everything in quotation marks for this show. Bigger on the inside. A green, red, three generic aura. That's a very expensive aura. Enchanted land or an artifact. Enchanted permanent has tap. Target player adds two mana of any one color. The next spell they cast this turn has Cascade. The next spell they cast... Target player adds two... And you can give mana to somebody, which is interesting. Oh yeah, there's a lot of room in there. Police public call box. Is that what they call them in the UK? It's a call box. It's not a phone booth. You call people in there. And why is there still a call box? How, how is the call? Did, did the show end because they destroyed all the call boxes? Like these days, I've never, I don't even know what a phone 
booth looks like anymore. They've taken them all off the street. Who uses a phone booth? Who even keeps change on them to call anybody? Uh, I think this card stinks. It's not very interesting. The show is still going on? So, so like, what, everyone just sort of igno ignores this random phone booth? Even though, like, imagine 200 more years in the future. This phone booth is gonna look pretty weird! And what about the phone booth? Like, when did this show, what era does the show start in? It looks like it's only covering, like, the last 200-ish years, so I guess the phone booth still doesn't look... No, the phone has, hasn't been around for 200 years. They don't ignore it. They find it weird. What, what is this stupid phone booth doing here? It's going to get even stranger and stranger over time. Steve Cooper is not done yet. Bigger on the inside. Oh, no, we did that one. We are done. We're done? We're done. Okay, if you love you love the commander cards, pick them up at fusiongamingonline.com. All right, if you love Call and MTG, and I know you all do, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks so much for your support. I mean, it was an amazing support today. People love their Doctor Who. They also like their commander. And also thanks to everyone who's a Patreon patron, a member on YouTube, and everyone who donates in chat to be part of the show every weekday. And we also got to thank all of you, everyone who's here every single morning, because you guys are the show. I'd be nothing without all of you. So we gotta thank Kenkush and Zazmizmas. And old boy, some 124C, Crowcar Games, Game Over Time, Emerald Crawley. We got Steve Cooper, Blatonic Liquid, Toilet Doc Toads, Jesse, uh, King Ginger, Avatar of Woe, Silvercations, Loomis. Because without all of you, I'd have no show. So as usual, keep bringing up them coffees and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next cup.